Hey, hello. Uh, welcome back. Um, this is going to be the third part in getting um, Savage Core miniatures uh, built, cleaned, painted, uh, basically table ready. Um, we are going to be working on uh, Roscoe, uh, this little monkey from the Beyond the Savage Core expansion for the, it's called the Temple of the Golden Heart. Um, so we're going to paint him. Uh, I'm also going to paint uh, the uh, Vim uh, who was released for uh, the Ice Age, Age of Ice um, expansion. Uh, Adam primed a while ago. Um, this primer is ultra heavy duty automotive lacquer. Uh, it's not going to come off this model. Um, I happen to like it, even though it's super glossy. Um, yeah, I mean, if you use that primer for, I think it's a duplicolor primer. Um, if you use it on uh, plastic, the only way you can get it off of plastic is by buying a new model. Um, on metal, you could probably use like acetone or something, but it's super resilient. Um, it is just very difficult to see what you're, like that's just a black blob. Um, but we're going to paint this one at the exact same time. Uh, that way, while this guy's drying, you can paint this. By the time this thing's done, we'll be able to jump back to here. And you'll see that the way we're painting these, the two different undercoats aren't going to mean a whole lot. Um, so let's go over everything that we need. Um, I've got little dish of water uh, that's just like some throwaway uh, something that had food in it at one point and instead of recycling it I'm reusing it uh, you know um, for a paint palette I'm just using a blank CD because who uses CDs anymore and I've got like a whole stack of a thousand of these they were from previous job um, and they're I don't I don't own anything with a, a CD drive in it anymore so might as well use them for pallets um, and the only other thing that we will need paintbrushes you do not need this many paintbrushes you need this many paintbrushes um, We've got this cheap, shitty paintbrush that's clearly seen better days. Uh, I, this, this is just a army painter, large dry brush. It's a synthetic bristle and it was pretty cheap. Um, and it's been pretty abused. Uh, if you're going to be doing any dry brushing, don't use expensive brushes on it. Buy bags and bags of cheapo brushes from, you know, the dollar store or Michaels or something. Uh, even, even this, I've, I mean, this, I've had this brush for a while, so, you know, it works well. Um, I think it was like five bucks. That's probably the most I'd spend on a dry brush because you do beat the piss out of them and then you gotta throw them out. Uh, the other brush that I'm using, uh, this is uh, number two, Windsor Newton Series 7. Uh, I've had this brush for the better part of a decade and as you can see, it still holds its tip. Uh, you don't need a brush smaller than that. I mean, I've got, you know, there's the, uh, 
I mean, that one's a triple zero. It's small. Like, stupidly small. I never use this brush. The tip is too small. Doesn't hold enough paint. Um, you got a number. This is a double two. Sorry, double zero. Uh, again, it doesn't hold enough moisture. Uh, and then I, my number one, this is a size one. It's really difficult to focus on this. Uh, so this is size one. This is actually a, a more of a, a rigger or a liner brush than than it is like a. Uh, whatever these ones are called, like the, look at the bristle lengths. The one on the left is my number one. This is the number two. And yeah, uh, and then there's also size zero, which Again, I find it, I find it too small for painting miniatures. Um, the, if you're doing watercolor painting, which is what these brushes are designed for, um, then you're going to be able to work with them a little better, um, or like the the smaller brush sizes. Um, and on, to, on like this brush, because it holds a tip so well, we don't need anything smaller than a number two, maybe a number one, uh, not the number one that I have, which is again, uh, a rigger, um, which are like, they, those are brushes that are designed for painting like a, uh rigging on on boats and ships like in a in a painting so you can draw like a really straight line and while your hand vibrates there is enough bristle down here that that as this piece is vibrating this bit won't move as much so you're able to draw straighter lines um so th there's some brush history you only need Windsor Newton Series 7 size 2, and then a bunch of cheap, crappy brushes. Um, or, you know, you could use a, a Kalinske Sable brush. They've got a slightly larger handle, which is good if you've got uh, arthritis or any sort of mobility issues in your hands. Um, it's easier to hold on to. It's probably something I should upgrade to. Um, there's also uh, Raphael, um, and there's lots of brushes. Uh, this one's probably 35 Canadian, so high 20s in U.S. prices. Um, I would recommend going over to an art store um, and finding the sort of 20 to $30 paintbrush, uh, a size 2 or a size 1. Um, and just go over there and hold a few of them in your hands, see which one you, you, you like. Um, again, I've had this brush for a decade. I'll probably have it for another decade before I have to replace it. Um, and then I, like, I do have a, a jar full of other fancy paint brushes that I like to test out. Um, so far, nothing has come up that I've wanted to replace this. Um, and if you buy these brushes, you will be replacing them fairly regularly. And at, you know, five, bu five bucks a brush, uh, you put, replace them three or four times a year. That's already 
paid for one of these. Uh, cool. Um, so those are brushes. Got the minis. Got our water. Got our palette. You could use a like a real paint palette. I have a few that I keep in my travel bag. Um, you could also use a wet palette, uh, which is just a, a a dish with a wet sponge and um, like some parchment on top of it that sort of keeps the the paint from drying out too fast. We're only doing two minis, um, so I don't need to worry about the paint drying out a whole ton. Um, and it's a good way to repurpose blister packs, uh, use your blister packs as, as paint palettes. Um, yeah. Okay, let's talk paint. Um, so for these guys, I paint all my furry creatures uh, pretty much exactly the same. Um, with with an alternate a, a few colors uh, but they they start out the same and and the final touches are pretty much the same it's sort of the the middle bit that i tweak the colors um just for variation really um so we'll talk about the paints that I'm using, uh, specifically for this, I'm using uh, Vallejo model color um, exclusively. Um, and then for washes, I'm using uh, the GW, the Citadel washes. Um, I like their washes. They're a lot nicer than, than the other acrylic washes. I know people complain about these bottles um, especially with when you have the lid open they tend to be wobbly um, the quick fix for that is um, to just cut the lid off now they're like instead of it sitting around like this being all weirdly unbalanced it, now, it's now just a pot um, Yeah, so that's that's how I solved my GW bottle issue. Um, you'll see me use this. This is not a custom bottle. This is Vallejo Mata Color Buff. The label fell off. Um, I also repurpose all my empty bottles for custom paints. I don't take these out of the GW packaging and put them in other packaging. Uh, I guess I'm just too lazy. Um, so for this, uh, we are going to use, we've got black uh, and German camo medium brown. Uh, so these are the, the actual product numbers, uh, or in the range numbers. So, uh, black is 950. This big long title is 826. Uh, we're then going to use brown sand, uh, which is 876. Uh, and then gold brown, 877. And then uh, Vallejo model color buff. And I don't know the, the product number for that one. Uh, so, so those five paints. Uh, and then we've got Agrax Earthshade. Null oil, and then Reichland flesh shade, um, and really you could use uh, any sort of 
brown wash, and I'll talk about washes in a second, any sort of black wash, Vallejo makes both of these. It's called brown shade and black shade. Uh, they're just as good. Uh, and then there's also uh, this Reichland flesh shade, which uh, I don't think Vallejo has a skin wash, but that would work just as fine. This just adds a little bit of red. Uh, cool. So that's that, that's all the paint we're using. Um, so that should make things easy. And these two paints we are going to mix to make a a darker brown, basically like a well, we're making a black brown. Um, you could buy something like a camo black brown from Vallejo Model Color. Uh, or games color, I think. Um, I just have black and a variety of browns, and I'm just going to mix the two of them together to get the sort of dark brown that I'm looking for. Uh, and then this is going to be uh, overbrushed on everything. This is going to be overbrushed on everything again mix in some buff, start dry brushing, mix in quite a bit more buff, so it's almost just pretty much buff. That'll be the final uh, paint application. Um, and then, uh, then we will do a sort of mix of these, mostly brown with a, like a, a uh, two to one sort of mix of brown to black um, and then we will let that sit and then do a much darker black wash uh, but with a little bit of brown in it uh, and before we do the the brown black washing we will put some skin or the, the flesh shade you know uh, on the belly, on the belly, just to pull a different color into the, into the gut. Uh, okay, so we're going to start. Uh, painting minis takes a while. I suggest putting on Netflix or putting on podcast or music or whatever you want. Grab yourself a drink. Uh and we will get started. Okay, so step one, we need to get some brown on these guys. Oh, before I, we actually start, I'm gonna show you. So this guy, the dude whose ankle broke, uh, and we glued it back together, got some more primer on him. And fortunately, the break actually happened right along his, his the footwear uh, so the the glue squeeze out just sort of looks like the the top of his boot um, instead of like this weird glue squeeze out uh, okay back to painting so we're gonna start with and I gotta shake all this paint up uh, one thing I would recommend doing that I haven't done for all my, my paints is uh, putting ball bearings in these so that as you shake it can agitate the paint up. Um, I haven't done that for all my paints. So just put a whole blob of paint down there. Way too much paint, but sometimes that happens. Put some of this over here and it's it's being gross so there's probably a clog so I need to grab my 
safety pin or uh, paper clip from pinning that chap's ankle. Just punch a hole in the top of that to make sure that there's no paint clogging it. And there is, so this could be super f embarrassing. Let's see what's let's see what's going on. So I'm just gonna uh, pull this whole lid right off so that it looks like that. I'm gonna do this this way. Oh, interesting. And it's just real gross paint down there. All right, I'm just uh, gonna reach in with paintbrush and doing it with this paintbrush is not the best idea because this is a good paintbrush and I shouldn't be doing it this way. See, this is exactly what you want to avoid with a $30 paintbrush. So we're going to make sure this thing's real clean. Good enough. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take black, mix it into the brown to get ourselves, get some water in there, because this paint's really thick. Okay, so we'll just pick this up, point it right at the, so this is kind of the, brown we're looking for. That's right there. We're gonna make sure this is adequately thin. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure this paint bottle is not somewhere where I'm going to stick my arm. Then we're just going to start painting. Uh, and this layer, we can get this paint pretty much everywhere. I'm going to be a bit careful because I don't really want to mash the bristles of this paintbrush too much. Um, but I'm not being neat and fussy. Um, you could also wear gloves if you don't want to. It does the same uh, latex or latex-free uh, gloves if you don't want to get yourself real dirty. This stuff's water-based acrylic, so it'll wash off pretty easily. Uh, we are going to do his cloak, uh, his crown and the scepter in slightly different colors. Uh, once we're done with the 
the main fur, and that's going to be the same on on that guy. His his decorative bits are going to be uh, a bit different. Uh, we're basically going to paint the fur uh, on both of these guys at the same time. Get that done. And then we'll do the accessories afterwards. I'm going to try and stay on camera. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not looking at my camera screen. Uh, at the same, like while I'm painting, uh, it's just it's sort of difficult. It looks like I need to get a bit more light down here too. And then we've got to paint the top of this guy's head. It's fine. This paint is going down. It's it's pretty dark. It's almost black. It's like a dirty black right now. Uh, which is what we want. It's basically all our shadows. Uh, and like under fur. Uh, hopefully the microphone is not picking up the movie I have playing in the background otherwise this video will probably get some sort of stupid DMCA takedown okay so that guy's got his base fur down time to move on to this guy sorry about hitting the camera thing so we will just Get some paint on this guy. I'm gonna get a little bit more water in this mess. Mix up a little bit more. And this doesn't have to be precise. Um, this is not. Uh, ex there's nothing exact about what I'm doing here. I've I've sort of written down a formula of how I paint all these things, uh, mostly for the sake of consistency between uh, minis, so that all my Simians have uh, a roughly similar uh, look to them. Uh, but it's, I don't like like mixing this whole thing up and having like very specific formulas. Uh, because I do like a little bit of variety. As long as they look similar enough, uh, I prefer the, the variety. There can be, there can be differences. Uh, in the factions, keeps things interesting. Especially when you're painting a lot of the exact same thing over and over again. Being able to tweak a few things here and there definitely uh, helps you 
or helps me anyway stay interested in in painting much more difficult to see on on this guy because he's jet black but we're just gonna keep going at it um, the trick to brush painting is always make sure you're paint is going down really thin might end up with having to do uh, a few layers especially with lighter colors uh, or bright colors you might get a, a uneven uh, layer of, of paint um, I find things like browns go down pretty pretty even and don't don't typically need multiple coats even if you're putting it down real thin but you don't want to you don't want to fill all the the detail with uh with excess paint because then it won't be able to see any of the sculpting at that point, you might as well just be playing with wooden cubes. Okay, just gonna get a little bit more paint up on this face. Uh, and I am gonna start and stop the video a whole bunch just so that uh, I can wait for things to dry, uh, also so that I can bite into my snack or have a drink without everyone having to listen to me chomp on food or slurp down my beer. Okay, that guy is... That color is now done. Uh, I'm also going to get some better lighting up in here. Uh, let that dry. Uh, this dude will be dry in like two minutes. Uh, I put down quite a lot of paint, probably more than I should have, so he's still a little wet. Um, but like most of the front of him is already dry to the touch. Uh, it's it's basically just uh, along where this cape and his body meet up, and you can still kind of see it where you get like uh, that little flickering. That's not like. A blank spot that's that's the light catching on on uh, liquid um, so we'll let that dry for a second uh, I'll be back and we will we'll carry on with uh, step two uh, I also need to figure out what color I want to do the, his cape I think it's gonna be like a real gross dirty red I think that would look cool um, or possibly purple a nice velvet purple with with the the gold will look pretty rad anyway we'll be back in half a second <laughs> 